everyone, this is Anna from Koala Soap, and today I'm going to be using these little molds that I got. I, I'm not sure how easy they are to use, but we'll find out. Because I, I usually make the embeds with the larger squares in the circle, and I thought, well, this is cute, and this would be nice for the smaller embeds. I'm going to be using three colors today. I'm going to be using King Midas, uh, Aerial Blue, and this looks like Tail Green from Stardust Micas. And we're going to be using Yuzu Cybella for our fragrance. Um, we're going to be using this nice sturdy mold and I need to make enough embeds to pretty much fill this mold and then we will uh, pour soap on top of it. So let's go ahead and we're going to be using our clear melt and pour. It doesn't matter what kind of clear you're using because we don't need it to stay clear. We're not showing any um, designs inside the soap. So let's go ahead and get that melted down and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, um, I don't have three of these. I'm going to be doing three uh, colors for the embeds, but I only have two. It's a two-pack, and I guess I could have just stuck with two, but I wanted to see what these three colors look like together. Um, there was a question on the alcohol that I use. Um, I try to use above 90 for um, my alcohol, um, only because I like to push layers together. If you're just doing it to mix your mica, any alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol will do. And I think in the stores it's 70%. Um, I just find for me, for our um, environment or whatever, it just, it just seems to stick a little bit better than when I use the 70%. And because of you know, everything that's going on in the world, what I've done is I've just gone ahead and invested in buying two very large bottles of it and then refilling these uh, little ones. Um, so it's worked out quite well. Very happy with it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. This was the aerial blue, I believe, and then we'll do, so we'll do the, the King's Midas one. And I think Stardust Mica switched out this gold mica for a different one, but I still have some of this left. I'm not sure if this is the one they switched out or not. Um, this soap will be going to my mom and uh, her nurses. She will be dipping them out. Well, my brother will be dipping out my mom. So we will go ahead and we're gonna push these off to the sides. We're gonna bring these center. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I am actually, I hope I don't forget now I'm saying this. Um, I'm gonna actually be um, showing some soaps that were sent to me, um, either via Facebook Messenger um, or email, which is all below in the description. I am working on the website. I think you guys can see that. So I'm actually trying to put exact measurements, etc., down for you. I didn't really measure these because if I put water in here and then I pour it into one of these, it's just going to go everywhere. This doesn't look like it's going to hold a lot at all. So what I did was I only put, you know, probably about three ounces in each of these. And then we, we're going to be reusing them because I know I'm going to have to use these a couple times to fill that mold. So I don't think we're going to be wasting much of anything. So that being said, let's go ahead and we will mix our aerial blue. And it's actually okay because I, I believe this soap was in its 170s when I first got it out. I don't want to mix my um, fragrance yet until it's at a lower temp, but I'm um, pretty confident that once I start mixing in the mica, it will cool down and then I can go ahead and push in my, my fragrance. And we use about five ml per pound, that's my rule. Uh, today we'll be using, uh, this is from Brambleberry, so use you Cybella, in case I didn't already mention that.
we just have a learning moment. I'll share it with you. I underestimated this mold. It actually takes, and I, I did end up measuring it for you guys, uh, six to seven ounces. Um, and I, what I did was I put it on my scale, which you see here, I teared it so it hit zero, and then I just poured water in one of these and I poured it on there. Of course, the water got everywhere when I tried to get it out, so I used this, got to the sink, and I just mopped the floor, but there you go. <laughs> we'll fix that later. So this will take more than I thought. And as a result, as you know, it wasn't completely full, these molds. So I'm not gonna do a third color because of that. What I'm gonna do though, is I wanna make sure that I have enough, especially if I decide to do a little bit of a top on this. So what I've done is I've taken just another, maybe about two ounces, I peeled up the melting pour that was in here. I peeled it up and I added a couple, uh, like just a couple of ounces of a clear melt and pour soap. And I'm gonna go ahead and melt it down and I'm just gonna kind of use half here, half there, just so that I know that I have enough for when um, I'm gonna pour into this soap. So if you're gonna use this mold, which is about 20 to 22 ounces, you really, the two molds that you got, if you filled them up completely, um, that come in this pack, you would, you would fill this up. You wouldn't have to do a third run like I'm gonna do. So lesson learned, and I'm actually kind of pleased about that. And I will show you how to get, get the soap out of here. So basically you want to make sure that you squeegee with something that's flexible, not rigid, um, like a butter knife or something. You want something flexible that has a little bit of give here. Because if you do it too rigidly, it kind of takes a lot of soap out of here because this will bend down and then the soap kind of goes into the other ones. If you do something like this, a spatula, and if you don't have one that's removable, just use the top, okay? But something that gives with this, and that way you can kind of disperse the soap everywhere possible. And then when you're going to unmold, what you're gonna do is, what I found easiest, is you're just gonna peel up like this. And I will show that in the video, and it just kind of falls out, okay? Occasionally a couple of them were attached and I just pulled them apart, not a big deal. So let's go ahead and get this part done, and we'll be back. Okay, so this is now done and set. So the way I did it, um, unmolded them, is I just kind of bent up and they came right out. Anything extra like this little skin here, just put back in there and it just comes out. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab this mold. There's like little slivers here that I don't really need. And I'm just gonna grab the squares. Some of them are like, some of them are like uh, smaller than others and some of them are attached. You wanna make sure that they're not attached, like this one. Just make sure they get in there and that they all, they will fit, which it looks like they will. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these in here and then I'm actually going to, um, 
get all these little slivers out and I'm just going to let these cool for a little bit longer. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I've gotten the slivers out of here and I am going to go ahead and I'm just going to let these cool down for just a little while longer because sometimes, especially since I just made these embeds, sometimes what happens is they might still be warm on the inside and then when you pour um, the shea butter melt and pour in, it might make it melt. I, I really kind of want to keep the shape of these if I can. This will be a good time for you to kind of go through and separate any of the ones um, that didn't separate in the process. So we're going to let these cool for about an hour and we'll be back. Okay, so they've cooled down for about an hour, hour and a half now. I'm going to go ahead and cut the shea butter, shea butter melt and pour base. I'm going to cut a little bit smaller and then we're going to go ahead and heat it up and get ready to put everything in our mold. This is 10 ounces, a little over 10. I think it's 10.2 ounces. Just because every time I do this, I do 8 ounces or 7 ounces is never enough. So I'm hoping that this will be it. So 10.2 ounces. Okay, so we have this melted down. Let's see what we're at here. So 157.6. And that's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to do the colorant first. Let's see if I can put this over here. Okay. So I think the first thing is... I've been going back and forth whether I want to keep this white or green or what. So I've decided I'm going to take the aerial blue. I'm just going to put a little bit of it into the Shea Butter Melt and Pour. And the reason we do alcohol first, I've seen this question come up a few times now, um, is because if you add the mica powder directly to the soap without mixing it first, what will happen is you could get speckles in it and it's it's not a it just kind of settles to the bottom so it's kind of a good thing to just dissolve it a little bit I'm just gonna use just a little bit we've got a lot of base here so I think we'll be good either way we'll see we'll see what happens if anything we know that the the gold will pop and as you can see, you see how it's kind of clinging to the sides? You want to make sure you get that. Because if you pour it and it's not mixed completely, it will settle and it will do the little speckles. Unless you want the speckles. If you want the speckles, that's fine. It's just what happens though. And you can see we already have a skin on there. Get all of our mica, every last drop out. Mix it in. And what will happen sometimes is that mica, you'll see the clumps, it'll really grab onto that skin. That's okay. I'm just going for a light blue. And so we have a little bit of a light blue compared to, this is what it looks like in Shea Butter Melt and Pour and what it looks like in Glycerin Clear Soap. Let's see what we're at. So we're at 151. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in just half a dropper full. So 1.5 mLs of our uh, Yuzu Cybella, which is going to be about my midpoint line. I'm going to add that in. And I'm already doubting that I have enough soap. I don't know. We'll find out. We will find out. We'll let that cool down for just a little bit. I don't mind if a little bit of this melts down. That's fine. Um, I just don't want a lot of it to melt down. So I'm going to try to get it. So we're at 148. So when we're in the 130s, high 120s uh, or low 130s, we'll be back and we'll start our pour. Okay, so this is now developing a pretty good skin. It's at uh, 129 to 131. So we're going to go ahead and pour a base on there. And then we're going to go ahead and spray that part with alcohol. And then we're going to spray these with alcohol over here. Get them all nice and mixed in. I always put my spout here so that if it drips, it drips inside there. 
And now we're going to just go ahead and fill it up. See how it looks. Let's go ahead and have it there. Mix it well. And the reason I'm doing a little bit at a time is so that if there's any air bubbles in there, it'll work itself out before it gets too deep in there. I don't know if you can tell, but I have my little hole facing up. That way I'll always know which end is up on here. Separate them out a little bit. Stir this. I have a good hold on this. Hold on. And the thicker it gets, the harder it will be for you to squirt those air bubbles out. So what we'll do is we're just gonna try to get the last of these in. I think we called it right on the soap. We did, so 10.2, probably gonna overflow here, but that's okay. And we had just enough embeds. I do expect some of these embeds will fall off more, more than likely when we cut. So what I might do, we'll see. I have some glycerin left. So maybe what I'll do is I'll squirt the, or um, warm it up and then just kind of drizzle it over the top here so it'll stick better. So I think that's what we'll do because that's completely skinned. And I will melt this one down and maybe this one and then I'm just going to, you know, drizzle it on top. Okay, so what I did was I took the extra little squares I didn't use. I put them in here, squirted it, uh, squirt down with alcohol. This is kind of really hot. It doesn't take much when the glycerin is wet. And I'm just going to drizzle it over and it's going to act like a glue and a nice contrast. I understand it's hot and I understand it might actually um, melt some of the embeds, but that's probably a good thing because it's gonna, um, it might settle in a little bit easier, not fall off so easy during the cut, but we'll find out. It does bring it in nicely though. I do expect these will fall out, but It'll still be pretty. Okay, we'll be back for the cut. Okay, here it is. I've already unmolded it. And so I don't know if you can see it all. Very interesting looking. And so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna see if we, we're gonna use our wave cutter. So I wanna make sure it's gonna clear to do that. I need to see where the highest point is. I think that'll clear. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the cut.
Okay, so that's our soap. We'll see you in a couple of days. Um, stay tuned and I'm gonna show you one of our soaps that one of our subscribers sent to me via my email. If you wanna send me a soap that you'd like me to show, if you have a channel that you want me to highlight, I'm happy to mention it. I'll just mention your first name and a picture of your soap and you can find them at. If you have a channel, if you don't, we'll just do your soap uh, and your first name. So this is Anna from Koala Soap. We'll see you in another couple days and have a great weekend.